With the flexible architecture of the GDC SR1000 IMB, you can opt for several upgrade options, including the inbuilt cinema audio processor capability. The SR1000 offers a variety of built in audio options, such as the 5.1, 7.1, or 15.1 cinema audio processor and 16 or 24 channel DTSX decoder with IAB support. The SR1000's built-in audio processor offers the capability to provide superior sound, designed for 5.1 and 7.1 PCM uncompressed surround sound functionality. Furthermore, you can opt for the built-in 15.1 cinema audio processor option, which eliminates the need for an external cinema processor, for a 16-channel DTSX or IAB immersive audio installation. You can also enable the 16 or 24-channel DTSX decoding capability of the server, to feature DTSX immersive audio solutions. The SR1000's DTSX solution, supports SMPTE's immersive audio bitstream or IAB standard, delivering a single interoperable audio format for theatrical distribution. For more information on enabling these optional audio features on the SR1000, please get in touch with GDC. Following are the SR1000 configurations available, depending on the audio features desired for your application. Once the server's audio processing capability is enabled, an additional audio tab will be available within the SR1000 web UI. In this tutorial, we will demonstrate how to configure the settings related to audio processing, present under the audio tab. The audio related controls and configuration options available within this tab, have been categorized under four sub tabs. The processing sub tab will be shown by default. This sub tab can be used to access the graphic EQ for the non LFE channels, and parametric EQ for the LFE channel. Additionally, you can manage the crossover settings for the left, center, and right channels, along with the channel delay and channel gain for each channel. The audio processing option will be enabled by default. You can uncheck this option, in order to bypass the audio processing functionality of the SR1000. Please note, that when you enable or disable this option, the corresponding changes to the audio output, will reflect from the next playback on the server. The fader controls can be used to adjust the main fader or volume level for all channels. The fader level value can range from 0 to 10, which corresponds to a gain output range of minus 90 dB to 10 dB. By default, the fader level value will be set at 7. You can either use the slider, or the plus and minus buttons, in order to adjust the fader level for the output channels. The mute button can be used to fade out all channel outputs, until they are muted. At this time, the fader level setting will remain unchanged. Click this button again, to unmute or fade in all the channel outputs, until their original set volumes are restored. The fade in and fade out durations, can be set under the configuration sub tab. The input level indicator, displays the audio input levels for all channels, in a graphical manner. Each of the channels are represented by their abbreviations, which are mentioned below the audio level meters. You can also shift the position of the fader controls and input level indicator, to a separate vertical panel alongside the web UI, by clicking this button. This feature allows you to view as well as adjust the master fader level, while browsing through any web UI screen. You can restore the position of these controls, by clicking on this button. The signal generator can be used to output an audio test signal, to one or more output channels. 
This function is useful for calibrating the auditorium sound system. We would recommend that you refer to the GDC SR1000 user manual, for more information regarding the audio calibration procedure. The signal generator can produce five types of test signals, which are pink noise, 100 Hz sign, 1 kHz sign, 10 kHz sign, and sweep. Using the signal type drop-down, you can select the required test signal, and initiate playback for the same. You can now choose to either play the test signal through selected channels, or play it sequentially through each channel. Select the normal option from the play in sequence drop-down, and choose one or more channels through which the test signal should be played. Alternatively, you can select 5.1 or 7.1 from this drop-down, in order to play the test signal sequentially through all the corresponding channels, one channel at a time. In this example, we have chosen pink noise as the test signal, which will be played sequentially through all channels in a 7.1 speaker setup. Please note, that using the signal generator and playback of content, cannot be done simultaneously. Select the off option from the signal type drop down, in order to stop playing the test signal. The equalization settings for all audio channels, can be configured under this section. For all channels except the LFE channel, you can adjust the equalization parameters, as well as manage the bass and treble settings. Each of these channels, supports 27 frequency bands of 1 3rd octave graphic EQ. The gain value for each band, ranges from minus 6 dB to 6 dB. You can either use the slider, or the plus and minus buttons above each frequency band, in order to adjust the corresponding band's gain value. Furthermore, you can also set the individual channel gain, and channel delay value for each output channel, within the graphic EQ subtab itself. The channel gain value, can be set within the range of minus 22 dB to 8 dB, whereas the channel delay value, can be set within the range of 0 to 500 milliseconds. Please note, that changes to the channel delay for any channel, will reflect from the next playback on the server. In order to adjust the low frequencies or high frequencies, for any non-LFE channel as a whole, you can use the corresponding bass treble subtab. The adjustment range for bass, is from minus 6 dB to plus 6 dB, and that for treble, is from minus 12 dB to plus 12 dB. You can either use the slider, or the plus and minus buttons above the bass and treble options, in order to adjust their corresponding value. Additionally, you can select the desired treble corner frequency, using this particular drop-down. For the LFE channel, you can use the parametric EQ to adjust the bandwidth, frequency, and gain for the channel. Additionally, you can select either the optimized default low pass filter, or SMPTE defined low pass filter. You can also switch the phase invert off or on. This option inverts the phase of the LFE channel, which can be used to check whether the subwoofer is in phase with the center channel or not. You can also enable the crossover functionality for the left, center, and right channels, in a two-way by amplified mode. To do so, click on the corresponding crossover subtab, and select the by amp option from the active crossover drop-down. Please note, that an extra output channel will be taken, for each active crossover that has been activated. Once enabled, you can configure the low band and high band filter settings for these three channels. This includes selecting a filter type for the selected band, and selecting the slope based on the filter type chosen. The channel which the selected band will replace, 
will be set by default. You can set the cutoff frequency for the low, as well as the high band. The cutoff frequency value ranges from 20 Hz to 20 kHz, and it is set to 500 Hz by default. Additionally, you can set the current band gain for each band. The band gain value ranges from minus 6 dB to plus 6 dB, and it is set to 0 dB by default. The copy option can be used to copy the selected channel settings to a specified channel. In this example, we will be copying the left channel settings to the right channel. To do so, select the left channel, and click the copy button. Then, select the right channel from the copy to drop down, and click the green tick button. The flatten option can be used to reset the EQ and gain values of the selected channel. For instance, when the graphic EQ subtab of any non-LFE channel is selected, clicking on flatten will reset the EQ and channel gain values to 0 dB. Once all the audio channels have been configured, you can save their settings to the current preset, by clicking the save button. The presets drop down, lists all the audio presets which have been created. Each preset includes the values for EQ gain, crossover, channel gain, channel delay, and global delay. You can create a new preset, by clicking on this button. Every preset that is created, can be copied, renamed, saved, and deleted using the corresponding options. Additionally, the import and export options allow you to import and export the audio presets respectively. The DCP channel sub-tab, can be used to select the channel assignment standard, that the DCP adheres to. Under the channel assignment section, you can select a standard for each type of DCP, based on the audio channel count. Currently, there are two channel assignment standards that you can choose from, as shown. Please note, that the SMPTERDD52 Table 3 channel assignment, will be applied by default. In order to view the channel assignment for each of the listed standards, go to the channel assignment standards section. Here, you can select a standard from the select standard drop down, to view its corresponding channel assignment. You can use the output routing sub tab, to remap different audio channels to the audio outputs of the SR1000. Under the audio output routing section, you can configure an audio mapping preset, based on the channel count of the source. Please note, that the GDC channel assignment routing preset, will be applied by default. In order to view and configure these presets, go to the routing presets section. The routing preset drop down, you can select a preset to view or change the routing settings. You can also add a new preset, or delete the current preset, using the add and delete buttons respectively. Click on the add button, to add a new preset. Enter the preset name and click OK. You can now assign any input channel defined by the source, to any output channel. Click on the save button, to save the changes to the preset. 
This new preset will now be added to the routing presets list, and will be available under the output routing section. Please note, that you cannot edit or delete the GDC channel assignment preset. The configuration sub-tab, provides certain configuration options related to audio processing. The global delay option can be used to achieve audio video synchronization, and can be set in the range of minus 250 milliseconds to 200 milliseconds. The output sampling rate option, displays the audio output sampling rate, and will be fixed at 48 kilohertz. The fade in option can be used to set the fade in duration, when the master fader is unmuted. The fade out option can be used to set the fade out duration, when the master fader is muted. The enable LTC output on channel 15 16 option, can be used to enable LTC output on AES channels 15 and 16, in order to synchronize with external systems like third party 4D systems. The disable L plus R plus C mix on channel 9 option, will be unchecked by default. This indicates that channel 9 carries a LCR mix, which can be used as a monitor output. If this option is enabled, it indicates that channel 9 does not carry a LCR mix. If the center channel on L slash R option is checked, the center channel output will be mixed with the left and right channels. This option can be useful in case of any issues with the center channel speaker or amplifier, as it mixes the center channel audio with the left and right channels. The mix L slash R low band crossover option, can be used while using the crossover functionality. When enabled, it will mix the low bands of the left and right channels, to a single channel output, which is the left low output. With this option enabled, the low frequency inputs of the left and right amplifiers, must be connected in parallel to the left low output of the SR1000, using a D2A converter. This option allows for a 5.1 audio setup with a bi crossover, using an 8-channel D2A converter. The AIB2000 audio input-output box from GDC, offers a built-in 8-channel premium quality D2A converter. Designed for the SR1000 with built-in cinema audio processor, the AIB2000 device can be used to interface with external audio equipment, such as analog amplifiers, booth monitor, microphone, and media players. Technical specifications and documentation related to the AIB2000, can be found on GDC's website. With the SR1000 Extreme and Extreme 24 configurations, the 16-channel audio processing feature can be enabled, which allows 16-channel DTSX or IAB immersive audio installations, without the need for an external audio processor. When the 16-channel audio processing feature is enabled on the SR1000, a few additional options will be available under the Audio tab. These options, will primarily be available under the Processing and Configuration sub-tabs. Under the Processing sub-tab, you can manage the graphic EQ, bass treble settings, and individual channel gain and channel delay, for the channels 9 to 16. To do so, click the right arrow button as shown. You can now access the equalization settings, for channels 9 to 16. Here, you can select the desired channel, and then choose either the graphic EQ, or the bass treble sub-tab, in order to adjust the corresponding settings. If you want to disable audio processing for the channels 9 to 16, you can click on this toggle button. As you can see, the EQ settings for channels 9 to 16 are no longer accessible. Click on the same button again, in order to re-enable audio processing for the channels 9 to 16. In order to go back to the EQ settings for channels 1 to 8, click on the left arrow button as shown. You can also calibrate the channels 9 to 16, 
by playing a test audio signal through them, using the signal generator function. Select the required test signal from the signal type drop-down, and initiate playback for the same. When the normal option is selected from the play in sequence drop-down, toggle buttons for all 16 channels will be enabled. You can then choose one or more channels through which the test signal should be played, including channels 9 to 16. Alternatively, you can select the 16 channels option from this drop-down, in order to play the test signal sequentially through all 16 channels, one channel at a time. Furthermore, the left and right arrow buttons on either sides of the input level indicator, can be used to switch between the audio level meters for channels 1 to 8, and channels 9 to 16 respectively. Under the Configuration sub-tab, you can now change the audio output channels for HI-VIN, and DVOX signals. These drop-down menus, can be used to select the respective channels for HI-VIN, and DVOX. The configuration options available on the SR1000 Web UI, when the 16 or 24 channel DTSX decoding, and IAB playback capabilities are enabled, will be discussed in a separate video. This tutorial is now complete. Thank you for watching.